We've just had some very late breaking news from Frontier about some sweeping changes coming to Elite Dangerous very soon that will fundamentally change how some players interact with the game and almost certainly how some people feel about the game. We've had almost no time to digest the information that we've had but it's such important stuff that we thought we'd get it out to you as soon as we humanly could and we'll give you our initial thoughts on all of this at the end. So firstly engineering. In rather vague terms FDev have said that they will be making some balancing changes to engineering with their focus being to make engineering more accessible and predictable allowing players to focus on the ship build rather than the materials needed. We don't know any more details about what exactly that means at this point specifically but I'll circle round to this point again at the end with some thoughts. Next the game store. FDev have acknowledged that the games arcs store has become hard to navigate and it's often much harder than it should be to find what you're actually looking for on the store. To that end they will be refreshing the store to provide a better experience there for players. We currently don't know specifically when that refresh is set to launch. Whilst players will still be able to earn arcs by playing the game and participating in events there will next month in May be adjustments to arcs pricing for cosmetic items alongside what FDev have termed new product types. It's these new product types where the game is starting to move into very new and potentially more controversial territory for Elite Dangerous. FDev are introducing to the store what they're calling ship variants which I'm guessing although it hasn't been specifically stated refers to the 4 new ship variants that the game has been promised this year. The first of these variants will be the new Python Mark II. The Mark II will be available for commanders to purchase with in-game credits on the 7th of August this year for Odyssey players. However, from the 7th of May you will be able to purchase 3 months early access to the Python Mark II for 16,250 arcs. Players who haven't got Odyssey will only be able to access the ship via the ARC store. On top of that FDev are introducing to the ARC store what they're calling pre-built ships. They've described the pre-built ships as offering the opportunity to purchase ships that have been given and I'm quoting them directly here quote a significant upgrade from their base models unquote. When describing the idea behind the new pre-builds Frontier have said it's a quote quicker way for newer players to get involved in the areas that they have the most interest in or for our existing players who are considering a new career path in game but do not have time to devote to a new build from scratch." Unquote. They further describe pre-built ships packages as providing quote instant access to a pre-fitted ship, a ship kit and a paint job that will typically be themed to match an activity within the game. Unquote. To illustrate the idea FDev described an AX combat jumpstart package that grants instant access to an alliance chieftain that has all the necessary modules to go straight into the action within the maelstrom. The Python Mark II will also feature a pre-built ship package that includes a ship kit and a paint job but there were no other details given on what else the ship might be fitted for. Cosmetic items on the store will be getting a best sellers section that will mean for example items such as midnight black, stygian and chromed paint jobs will be available for purchase all year round rather than being annual time limited offers and this section will be further populated with best sellers as time goes on. We've relayed all of this in as much detail as it was given to us. This means we don't yet know what exactly the balance changes that are coming to engineering are all about at all. From both a usability and value perspective from the player base and FDev the ARC store has been crying out for an update pretty much since the current iteration of its launch if I'm being brutally honest but I'd also say I'd like to see the refresh extend to the game launcher and how that represents the fact that the store even exists. Far and away the biggest headline from this announcement however rightfully so is that Elite Dangerous will be selling ships for real money. There are two sides to these ship sales as best we can determine at the moment those being early access to new ships and pre-built ships. 
quite honestly, early access to new ships is, on paper at least, dangerously close to implementing pay to win mechanics. Without yet knowing the specific performance of the new ships it's hard to be sure at this stage but I'm personally struggling to envision a scenario where the Python Mark II is a worse ship than what is in the game at the moment and yet still worth paying real money for. The announcement regarding pre-built ships is honestly rather unclear with its wording just to reiterate it's describing them as quote ships that have been given a significant upgrade from their base models unquote. A ships base model is E rated in game currently so this could mean for example that instead of an E rated anaconda you're paying to have an A rated anaconda delivered to you saving you from having to go to Shinrata or trawl around the bubble finding and buying components if you don't have access. The description doesn't mention engineering upgrades with the pre-builds at all but it doesn't specifically exclude them either so we're left wondering if they are part of the pre-build in some fashion or not. The necessity and process of engineering a ship in Elite has always been one of its major barriers to accessing content for a lot of players and I can understand a desire to level out that particular cliff somewhat so I'm pleased to hear that there is an intent at FDev to make engineering more accessible and predictable. What form making that engineering more accessible takes is absolutely key however and it's important that if engineering is touched by these changes then it's accessible for everyone equally regardless of the depth of their wallet. But I'd stress again FDevs communication here has been sudden and quite non-specific so we are currently left unable to confirm the answers to some important questions. We sincerely hope that Frontier will delve deeper into this release of information on tomorrows livestream where Arf will be interviewing senior designer Luke Betterton and game designer Curtis Griffiths. As without these gaps being filled in the community's knowledge then it could sadly lead to an easy spread of misinformation and widespread conclusion jumping which will not benefit anyone. We and many others in the community have said for a very long time that Elite Dangerous needs to be better at making money for FDev. If Elite makes money for the company then it is much more likely to go on into the future whilst continuing to be developed and having new content created for it. It's a healthy thing for a live service game and I'm very happy to die on that hill. There is a very careful line with monetization of a live service game however that we're sure FDev are fully aware that they need to tread carefully on. If any advantage is given to a player because they simply have a bigger wallet than another player then the game tumbles down a very dark hole indeed and it's likely a hole that Elite Dangerous won't easily be able to dig itself out of. If however FDev have struck the right balance here then this could be the shot in the arm and indeed the bank balance that the game has been crying out for. Will you be there for tomorrow's livestream? How do you feel about this news overall and would you be happy to pay for early access to the Python Mark II? Let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video be sure to like and subscribe so YouTube shows you all our content and if you'd like to support our work here at the Burr Pit you can also join us on Patreon. Links to that and everything we've talked about in this video you'll find below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.